Um, God bless you, God's people. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Blessed Father, we thank you this morning. We give you praise and glory and ask you, O oh God, to encourage the heart of your people, O oh God, and we thank you for the consolation. Father Lord, that we, are, that we are with you and you are with us. In the name of Jesus, amen. God's people, I decided to make this video this morning after I saw um, a video where somebody asked, um, is Samuel Osin in heaven or also? Personally, I never met Samuel Osin in life. I never played his music in life. I never knew him in life. I once had a rumor or something like that and I moved on. I had nothing to do with him. I mean, I play a lot of Nigerian gospel music, but somehow I, I don't know, I wasn't playing his music. But the day I saw that he had passed, you know, I quickly went to his videos. Let me show you what I saw. One of the vid the first one I played was the one he sang Hallelujah with the church. That's so much energy, praise God. And then I played the started playing the second video, the second song. And um, I finally found that that song was very prophetic to the nation called Nigeria. I call Nigeria Yahweh Shama, that Yahweh Shama, the Lord is there. So I started playing one of his songs. And the moment I started playing one, there was so much joy going on, so much dances. I'm going to play that song right now. And suddenly I saw him in a, with a group of angels and then he, they took him to heaven. Let's play that song. Then after that, I will tell you again another time I saw him. Let's play that song. I'm going to turn this video around. I'm going to play this song to the end. Because I enjoyed it. This is, the, this is what I was playing. Suddenly the Lord opened my eyes and I saw him taken to heaven. It was like a no angels were here singing the song with him and suddenly he rose with the angels to heaven. You know, when he, when he passed on, I, just, I began to see the prophetic nature of this very music. You know, it's called Addicted. It connected all the tribes of Nigeria, you know, in one praise worship. And the significance of this is that the entire tribes of Nigeria will together worship God in one accord. That's what it means. So this is very prophetic. Nigeria is made up of many tribes. So he was using different tribes. Different tribes came here to worship the Lord in their language. When it comes to Yoruba tribe, I want you to pay attention to the clothing that is what he was wearing and how he was dancing because that will inform the second vision I saw about him. Of all 
his house is sound. Because it points to the millennium reign of Christ, when all tribes, all nations will come together to worship the Lord in one accord. You know, that is the prophetic nature of this. First time I ever played Samuel Apostle's songs. I never knew him. So I started playing these songs, and suddenly I saw him in a company of angels and they lifted him up to heaven. So I put place it on my Facebook. When people are saying the church killed him, church killed him, suddenly, you know, I saw this. He is in heaven. 
Now, I want to, the Holy Spirit is just leading me to talk about what happened, and to say something about um, what happened. I mean, he's um, the seed. We understand that God has a word. I want, let me just um, bring Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 3. Let's see Ezekiel chapter 3. Or Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 18. Please be patient with me. Uh, open, open, open. I'm just trying to open my app. Okay, let's check, quickly check Ezekiel chapter 3. Is it verse 18? Moreover, uh, I some of my all my words. Please, patient with me. Okay, now listen to me. Ezekiel chapter three verse eighteen says, "When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require from him. That if thou warn the wicked man and he turn from his wickedness, now listen, and not from he turn." not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way. He shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man turned, okay, nevertheless, if thou want the righteous man that did sin, okay, I want to, okay, I don't want to go deep into this. The point here is, if the wicked man, or whatever, whoever has sinned or backslided, repents, I don't want to search, maybe I should have searched that scripture before now. The Lord will forget all the sins you have committed because you have turned away. You have regretted. You have, you have returned to the Lord. God will forget, forgive and forget. That's why Jesus died. And then the blood of Jesus will wash you and you have a clean slate before God. And God will appoint, will cover the person with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So you see that when King David sinned, he repented. And David, we did not hear that David returned to the old sin. That's why um, repent means, in Hebrew, it means um, shenbet. Shenbet, uh, shenbet, yeah. That is shin and bet. Uh, shin is a uh, epitograph of his front teeth that crushes, that burns, that consumes, you know, presses. That's what the teeth does. So that is a pictograph of sheen. Now, we have also another word they are built. Built is the house. House. So when somebody repents, in Hebrew it means burn the house. Shembet. Burn the house. Consume the house. Destroy the house. That's what it is. So you destroy the body of sin and return and repent. Like the people of sin, even when they re when they sinned against God, and God wanted to destroy Nineveh, and when Jonah eventually went to Nineveh, let's not forget about all his story, and went to Nineveh, and eventually did the will of God, what did God do? God turned. So if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and repent and seek my face and forsake their wickedness, then will I hear from the heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. So God um, this man, whatever it was he did, might not have been right, but the Lord, after allowing him to be disgraced, he returned to the Lord, cried to God, God forgave him and wiped away all that. Now, I want us to, the second vision, I, so I want us to understand, this is to the those who care for this man, I want you to understand that Sammy Owosu, is in heaven now. I want to talk about the second vision of sin. This second vision, I mean, I think it, it, it lasted for almost two days. I posted it on my Facebook. I want to show you what happened. I wasn't thinking about him, I was just going about my business when I saw some Augustine. That's why I said, Pay attention to the what he was wearing and how he was dancing with the Yoruba team. The when they were singing, he was dancing with the Yoruba. See the garments. The Yoruba garment he was wearing. So that's the way I saw him bet. I saw him wearing something like this in heaven. He was shining from heaven. He was displaying different colors of this cloth in heaven. I want to tell you a little bit about this mantle. It's called my father's mantle. 
I want to tell you something about this mantle. This is just um, um, a drawing. It can because I was seeing it in it was just shining my eyes and I was seeing him dancing the way he was dancing with the yellow bar and that's the the way this thing fit him is the way it fits him on that yellow bar um, when he was dancing on the yellow bar scene. I think I will have to bring it back. When you were dancing on the Yoruba see, let me see if I can see get it back. Uh, Yoruba, yes. Oh, no, no, that's not Yoruba. Is that Yoruba? Let me get the Yoruba. I don't know. I can get it. I'm sorry, I'm trying to. I don't know, I'm trying to get the Yoruba. Why are you dancing for the Yoruba? Freezing. You know, I don't want this thing to keep distracting us. Um, I I saw him wearing that garment. I saw him wearing that garment. Um, if you have time to check this video out, you can check it out by yourself. Let me just return to what I'm talking about. Now, I saw him wearing that garment. It is called my father's. Um, it's called my father's mantle. My father's mantle. Um, somebody. Um, called Anna. She had um, a lot of uh, visitations to heaven. And the Lord, in the process of her call, the Lord gave her a lot of mantles. And um, she talked about the history of this very mantle. This very mantle is, according to her, um, the Lord released this mantle for the church. That's when the unbelievers hijacked it and established Broadway. The person that had just started a Broadway. So that you see that in a Broadway, if you go to maybe New York Times Square or something, you always see this uh, Broadway has this kind of flashing lights, different colors. So I might say that it's my father's mantle. So this mantle, um, the man has died anyway. The mantle has been returned to the father. So Anna was receiving it for the church. This mantle flashes, you know, different colors, in different colors of beauty, of glory, of glorious, beautiful colors. So in the middle is, the middle shows um, the the other cover, that is the, the back side, because it has double sides, the double side of the mantle. This double side of the mantle is brownish, it's undesirable, it's looking kind of sloppy. That is, it presents humility. It takes humility to wear that mantle. We know that when Samuel also um, sinned, it takes humility to acknowledge one sin and come openly to apologize to the whole world. Acknowledge your sin and apologize to the whole world that I have sinned. I have, you know, I have sinned against my wife, against the body of Christ, against those who trusted me, against those who I'm mentoring. And I'm asking God to forgive me and I ask you guys, I feel, you know, I feel like crying now, you know, I feel a kind of tear, like a contrite heart. The Bible says that a broken and a contrite spirit, the Lord does not overlook. So when we have that contrite, because said in somewhere in Isaiah that it dwells 
with he dwells in the you know heavenly places he also dwells with those who have contrite and a broken spirit so when people repent of their sins and have a broken heart god comes in to console them and heal them you know so the second time that is what i'm saying the second time i saw him that was five days ago i posted it on my facebook i posted this thing on facebook you know it was just when i went to my facebook to check what I posted on my Facebook, then I saw this, um, I saw that it was five days ago. I posted it on my Facebook. Let me just show you where I posted it on my Facebook. I saw some, sorry, dancing like the Yoruba kind of dancing, the Yoruba way, the way you were dancing with the Yoruba and the way this garment fits him is the way the Yoruba, that Yoruba garment he wore, he wore while dancing that song, that is how that Yoruba, this thing, fits him. So I posted this on the Facebook. I said, uh, this is my Facebook. First of all, I posted, I keep seeing, I keep seeing flashes of Samuel also from heaven. He has a coat that radiates different glorious colors and is full of joy and happiness. I don't know why he keeps flashing before my eyes. To God be the glory. That's the first thing I posted. And that was five days ago. Um, then I came up again. I think it was five or six days ago. Uh, because this image, this vision continued to radiate before my eyes. I kept seeing him dancing and laughing and rejoicing. So I posted it again, the description of the garment that I keep seeing on Sami Okusin in heaven. The shape of the garment is like the shape of the Yoruba garment he wore when dancing with other tribes in the song Addicted. That's only the shape. But then the garment displays various shades of sparkling colors. I have read about the garment. So I read about this garment in Anna's Dustin. Sammy Owosan is not only in heaven, he's wearing a very important garment. That is my father's garment. He has put on the father himself. And he's wearing the father's garment. And as I said, it takes um humility because the other part of the garment is very, very dark. It's very, very on on the you know unattractive that's humility it's kind of brownish it takes humility he said, he said it took humility for jesus christ to become the king of the whole world it took humility for jesus to go to the cross it takes it took humility for jesus christ to um to obey the father in everything even when he was in gethsemane he cried unto the father i said if let this cup pass from me, but not as I will, but as you will. He humbled himself. So it takes humility to become, to fulfill your destiny. Some also is in heaven. I saw him taken to heaven, doing in worship and praises. Thank you, Jesus. And I also saw him wearing this garment and rejoicing and dancing and laughing. Few days, maybe two days to his um funeral so people of god i want to thank god i want to bless god for his mercy god that forgives our sins god that heals us god that comforts us he is a father that disciplines us that we you know with one hand he will discipline us and use the other hand to bring us and comfort that's why i don't believe in um the apostle paul's um some of his episodes hand him over to satan Satan is only stealing, killing, destroying. But God is the father that disciplines. So even if we have to hand somebody over to um, for, for discipline, it is to God who is the father, who knows the amount of measure of discipline that we need, who knows how to humble us, and who also comforts us as he disciplines us, and who also heals us. So you don't hand people over to Satan, you hand them over to God. Father, we bless you this morning. I thank you for your mercy in yours forever. I thank you, oh God, that Sammy, oh God, after serving you, he fulfilled, he fulfilled his assignment with joy. He 
fulfilled what is written of him in the book of his life. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, people of God. I greet you all. In Jesus' name. Amen. I will post this thing on my, on my YouTube channel. Thank you, Jesus.